I've got a two part question. <clears throat> yeah. First part is, do you see, of course, we're, we're as of today on this show, we're walking into the summer of 2022 right now. Um, do you see real estate? And I'm talking single family houses for this question. Do you see single family house prices continuing to rise this year through the end of 2022? Do, do you have any opinion on 2023? Uh, at what time do you see them start those prices starting to stabilize? And the other part of the, or the, uh, the, the next question is, do you see interest rates stabilizing anytime soon? I'm talking mortgage rates, or do you see those continuing to rise in 2022? Um, so it's, it's hard to put an exact timeline on it, but I think as long as single family home rental rates are continuing to rise, then I think single family home prices will stay propped up and probably go up. So I think that's what one of the major drivers is in this residential market is the rental rates for single family homes. And I don't see that coming down anytime soon. So I would say if you're looking for when's the top, you know, and when is home price, you know, price, or when are home prices going to, you know, stop accelerating, I would watch the rental rates and their acceleration. When that starts to cool off, then you're going to start to see home prices start to, you know, stop accelerating. Mm -hmm. um, the rental price, if rents start to come down, the opposite effect, right? I think you're going to start to see prices come back in. So I think that's really what's propping up a lot of the single family home values. And um, before you get to the interest rates, let me drill down uh, for a second on what you just said. So how is it that rental rates affect the prices of homes as far as whether somebody's going to rent or they're going to buy or driving up prices of homes? What's the correlation between rental rates and purchasing residential houses? B, because investors are such a large part of the residential market right now that you know and they're buying off cash flow so if you if you consider that you know there's a strike price for any investors cash flow if you keep moving that needle of rental rates upward they're going to be willing to pay more for that house that I'm not, sense. You know, and that, that's what i think is driving it right because investors are such a large piece of the pie and i think we're going to get news out about this summer and i think the you know Early this year, I was getting intel that they're like 20, that investors are 20% of all homes sold. I think this summer that's going to creep a lot higher because you've had home buyers that are priced out and not only pr home prices, but, you know, affordability of, uh, of getting loans. And I, you know, and, but investors are still buying left and right. You can look anywhere, Facebook groups, I don't, I, whatever, LinkedIn, people are out there buying houses. Um, for as, sure. Yeah, as far as uh, as far as rates and mortgage rates, <clears throat> um, what what I think is going to happen is you know the Fed's going to raise the Fed funds rate, right? But the Fed funds rate is tied to uh, very short term interest rates, the thirty day interest rate. So short term rates will certainly go up, and certain loan products are tied to short term rates, like construction loans, bridge loans, right? So a lot of your guys out there that are doing fix and flip stuff like that. Yeah, you'll see your fix and flip money. Uh, depends on who your lender is, right? Uh, probably go higher in rate. Um, Long-term interest rates are tied to different types of things, right? Like economic growth and inflation, right? So I think about long-term interest rates being the 10-year treasury or 30-year mortgage rate, stuff like that, right? Um, and, and what's going to happen on that end of the curve, you've already seen this happen a little bit, right? You saw the 10-year come down from 3.2 to now 2.7, eight somewhere today. And as the Fed raises short-term rates to put the, you know, put the brakes on the economy, you know, that'll take out growth and it'll take out inflation. And so those long-term rates will come down. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a very flat yield curve where, you know, and, and a lot of people have heard about, you know, yield curve inversion and flat yield curves, all this stuff. 
I, I think we're just going to end up with a very flat yield curve where the short term rates are basically in line with long term rates. Um, I don't think long term rates are going to explode. Um, a lot of people are getting very high mortgage rates right now. But but what's going on with that is that there because of what the Fed's doing, the high yield debt bond markets and these mortgage buyers have really step, taken a step back. And once so credit spreads have gone way out. Right. And so the way you get your mortgage rate is you take the index which is the treasury or the swap and then add the credit spread and then so once once things start to settle down and i, I think people get more and more certainty about how many hikes the fed is going to do and you know maybe take some risk out of somewhere right supply chain starts stops to alleviate or some inflation prints come down i think those credit spreads will start to narrow and then you know mortgage rates will actually long-term mortgage rates like 30-year mortgage rates stuff like that will really start to come in Awesome. Well, I like your crystal ball, Jake, a lot better than some of my other guests. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and you actually can justify it. You can justify it with facts. We'll, we'll, we shall see. I mean, the thing yeah. about interest rates is they're very, you know, I should trade rates, right? It's very hard to predict what's going to happen because I can tell you based on what's happening right now, where it might go but it could be completely different by tomorrow so <laughs> that's right that's right